Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this snowfall effect in Blender. It's going to be a really simple tutorial. If you know your way around Blender, I do recommend following my previous tutorial, which is Geometry Nodes Particles Blender tutorial. And that will show you how to make a Geometry Nodes Particle system, which will give you better control for more of a dynamic result. But if you want something simple, then this will be the tutorial for you. So without further ado, let's get to it. So open up Blender. The first thing I'll do is I'll delete the default lamp and I'll delete the default cube. I then hit Shift A, I'm going to go to Mesh, and I'll choose Icosphere. If we go to the bottom left here, we can open up this window, and we can change the subdivisions if we want. I'm going to keep it at 2, that should do for now. I'll then right click, and click Shade Smooth. Up here, in my view layers, I'm going to rename the object to Ico Snowflake. I'll then hit Numpad 1 to go into front view. I'll just hit Shift D and X to drag it on the X axis to around about there. Shift D, X, drag it on the X axis. And what we can do here is I'll select this one. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit O to go to proportional editing. Or you can click this button here and I'm going to keep it on smooth. I'll then select this vertice. I'm going to hit G. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel to something around about there. I'll just turn. I'll select this vertice. I'll hit G. Scroll my mouse wheel just to give it a random shape. Maybe this one. G bring it over to there. I'll then select this one. I'm going to hit tab, go into edit mode. I'll select this vertice and hit G. Let's bring it out. Maybe I'll grab this one. I'll hit G. I'll bring it in. Maybe I'll grab this one. I'm going to hit G. Bring it down. I'm just changing the proportional editing by scrolling my middle mouse wheel. Maybe I'll select this one as well. Tab into edit mode. I'll select this vertice. I'm going to hit G. Scroll my mouse wheel. We're just going to move these vertices out of it just to give it a bit of a random shape. That'll do. I'll then shift and left click select all three of these. I'll hit M for move and I'm going to add a collection and I'm going to call this collection Ico Snowflake and I'll click this arrow button here to move them all into that collection here. So I'm just going to temporarily mute this collection. Now this is the additional step if you followed the last tutorial. So I'm going to append a snowflake. So I'm going to hit F4. I'm going to click append. I'll locate the procedural snowflake from my last tutorial, which is this one. I'm going to double click into that file. I'll navigate to object and I'm going to choose snowflake. I'll then click append. Now that's appended that to this blend file. I hit numpad one. It's going to hit shift D, X, shift D, X, shift D, X, Shift D, X. So now I've got multiple duplicates. And um, with this snowflake here, I'm going to go into my modifiers and I'm going to change the seed pattern, something random. Do the same with this one. Maybe do the same with this one. And the same with this one. So now we've got unique snowflakes. I'll then shift select all of these. I'm going to hit M for move. I'll then click add collection and I call this snowflakes. I'll click this button to move them all into that collection. So now we've got two collections the Ico snowflakes and the snowflakes. So now I'm going to hit shift A, go to mesh and I'm going to choose cube. I'll then tab into edit mode. I'm going to disable proportional editing by clicking this button or hitting O. I'll then hit S4 to scale up by four and I'll hit enter. Tab out of edit mode. I'll then hit G, Z, hold down control to snap it to the grid until the base of the cube touches the world origin here. I'll then go to my particle settings over here. I'm going to click add new particles. I want the particles to spawn on frame one and stop spawning on frame one. So they all spawn on the same frame. I want my animation to be 480 frames long. So I'm going to go down here where it says end frame and I'm going to type in 480. I'll just zoom out on my timeline so we can see the beginning and end. Maybe I'll increase this window a bit. And down here where it says lifetime on my particles, I want them to last 480 five frames. And for source, I want to change it from faces to volume. I'll change the distribution from jittered to random. I'm going to scroll down to where it says velocity. I'll expand that. And under normal, I'm going to type in zero. Now, if I click play, they'll all fall down and we don't want that. So in order to turn that off to where it says field weights, and I'm going to disable gravity. I'll turn that to zero. So now if I go back to frame one, hit play, they should all stay exactly where they are. Excellent. Now navigate to where it says physics, expand these options. And at the moment it's set to Newtonian. We're going to change it from Newtonian to none because I'm not going to be using any simulations on this one. We just keep it basic. And then we're going to navigate to where it says render and we change the render as from halo to collection. Now this is where you can choose your Ico spheres or the snowflakes for now. I'm going to select the Ico snowflake collection. I'm going to disable show emitter, navigate to viewport display, expand these options and disable show emitter and under the render settings where we selected the Ico snowflake collection I'm going to click pick random 
and object rotation and with the cube particle system selected i'm going to hit shift d z hold down control to snap it to the grid until the top of the cube is touching the base of the cube above i'll then click that in place and the reason i'm doing this is because we want this to loop perfectly i'll then select my camera on the x location i'm going to type in zero on the y i'm going to type in minus five on the z i'm going to type in minus five for x rotation i'm going to type in 90 degrees and zero on the y and zero on the z now if i hit numpad zero let's go into camera view this should be what we've got excellent so i'll just scroll out of camera view i'm going to hit numpad three to go into side view just to make sure that the particles aren't intersecting with the camera we don't want that which it is so i'm going to scroll out i'm going to select the camera i'm going to hit g y hold down control snap it to the grid until it's on the marker here so now I'm actually negative six meters on the Y axis. I'll then hit numpad zero to go into camera view, just to make sure it's okay. Excellent. I'll hit numpad one to go into front view and I'm gonna to scroll to frame one on my timeline here. I'll select the bottom cube particle system. I'll navigate over to here where it says object data and on frame one on the Z location, I'm gonna add a keyframe. I'll then select the top cube particle system. I'll scroll over to my object data over here and on the Z location, I'm gonna add another keyframe. So we've got a keyframe on this one and a keyframe on this one. On. excellent i'll then skip to the last frame which is frame 480 i'll skip forward one more frame so it's 481 and the reason i'm doing this is because i want a perfect loop i'll then select the bottom cube particle system i'll then hit g z hold down control to snap it to the grid and we're going to bring it down eight units so now it's on minus 12 i'll then add a keyframe here i'll select this one i'm going to bring this one down eight units so that's g z so now it's on minus four i'll add a keyframe there now we need to change the animation interpolation type. So take your cursor to the top left until you see a crosshair, left click and drag until you open up a new window. And we'll change this from the 3D viewport to the graph editor. This is where we can see all our keyframes. I'll just hit N to close that panel. And this is our animation data here. Yours will probably look like this, which is a Bezier interpolation. So the animation will start off slow, it will speed up and then it will slow down towards the end. We don't want that, we want a constant speed. So hit T and then choose linear. And now it should be at a constant speed. There should be no rate of change. We finish with this window now. So in the 3D viewport, take your cursor to the top left until you see a crosshair. Left click, select and drag to the left and then let go. And that will close that window. Now if I hit numpad zero to go into camera view, push play, you can see We've got snow coming down. I'm just going to select this bottom particle system here. They're actually both the same. So when I go to my particle settings over here, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to change the collection from Ico Snowflake to Snowflakes. There we go. Excellent. And under scale, I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.025. I'll give a scale randomness of 0.75. I'll hit numpad zero to go into camera view. Maybe we can do a few more snowflakes here. So I'm going to scroll all the way up and I'm going to change the number to 2500. Now if I hit play, all the snowflakes are coming down. Excellent. Where both of these cubes are sharing the same particle system, the distribution of all the particles are identical. As one passes down, if I skip towards the end, I hit numpad one, I hit play, you can see it just resets back at the top. And what that will do, it will make a continuous loop. So if I just scroll over here on my timeline, I hit play, and there we go, we've got a continuous loop. Excellent. I'll just exit camera view and I'm gonna enable my snowflakes and my icospheres. So I've actually given my snowflakes a material. So let me select a snowflake. They all got the same material. I'm gonna drag my cursor to the bottom left until I see a crosshair. I then left click and drag up until I open up a new window. And I'm gonna change this from the 3D viewport to shader editor and the material is basically just a simple emission material if you don't know how to do that i'll just delete this quick you click new to add a new material you delete the principal bsdf and hit shift a go to shader and we'll choose emission shader i'm going to set the strength to two and then just simply plug that in the surface i'm going to apply that same material to the ico snowflakes so i'll just click my ico sphere i'll then select the snow material i'll do the same for these two as well I hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'm going to mute the Ico snowflakes and mute the snowflakes. If you don't see these options here, click this button here and you can enable all of these here and then you'll have the option to hide these from render. I'm going to change my render settings. So I'm going to change the render engine to EV. Now if I go into render view here, you can see it's a gray background. So I'll just go to my world settings and I'm going to turn the strength all the way down to zero. I'll change the gray to black. I'm going to take my cursor to the bottom left of my 3D viewport until I see that crosshair. I'll left click, drag and collapse that window. I'll then go to my output tab 
over here i've got my frame rate set to 30 frames per second choose the file location of where you want to save your image sequence i'm going to save mine in a folder called render cache you can save yours as an image sequence i'm going to change mine to a movie clip so i'll change it from png to ffmpeg i'm going to go down to encoding i'm going to change it from matroski to mpeg4 i'm going to keep it at h264 medium quality should be good enough before we render this out it's always good to save your file in case it crashes so i'm going to click file save as and i'll save the project as like and subscribe thanks folks you absolute legends then it's simply a case of hitting Control f12 and that will render out your image sequence that's the tutorial in a nutshell i hope you found this useful if you did please hit like and subscribe it really helps my channel have a great day level up and thanks for watching